The mic is a poet here in San Antonio, Ernest Hernandez. Hello. This poem is called Protective Language. Jefita, I remember Sundays taking pan dulce and then mijo para las sodas. One dollar became five and five became twenty. But what I really needed was your wisdom, your culture, language, indigeneity to protect me in a world which sought to rip the color from my skin and the accent from my tongue, the identity from our people. Maybe I didn't speak your language. Maybe we never had a conversation, but I know now how the $1, $5, $20 was a blanket and a covering to give a little chicanito some buying power in this land you knew too much of the hard way. And it got me through and here I am remembering you and knowing all you could or would never teach me, protecting me from history. Thank you. Damn it, I forgot to say, guys. Uh, if you have anything for yourself that you want to say, a website, anywhere we can find your reading, let us know. Uh, up next is Lois. I'm a sun poet. I'm typically at Almost Pharmacy every Wednesday night with the other sun poets. Come on out and join us. This one I wrote a couple weeks ago because I was so irritated with uh, the president-elect not doing the presidential daily briefings. And I'm still irritated with this, so this poem is PDB, our presidential daily briefing. Valentine's to write, cookies to bake, try to get in a game of tennis. Just don't have time for all that in the paper today. Just the A, a section. China colonizes the si South China Sea with islands, weapons on them. In Mexico, porpoise are dying off. UN nuclear plants hacking targets, releasing radiation uncontrolled. Chemical backflow from Petro plant into water of coastal city of refineries, shrimp fishing, and tourists. Russian cyber hacking out of control. A little espionage is okay, but this is too much. I have other things to do. Really need to post a picture of my puppy on Facebook. All these situations change every day. Aleppo crumbling, lives asunder. Refugees in southern U.S. without travel papers, but with children. And what about all those funerals of bio tissue? I'm sure glad someone is keeping up with all this, reading these, day, these briefings every day, ready to act in an instant, make correct decisions. I've got more important things to do. Thank you. And in honor of Martin Luther King Jr., as if from jail, this includes phrases from the letter from the Birmingham jail. We write on the margins. We speak to power on the white spaces left when the rest has been filled with nonsense. It may be late in the game, yet the preacher said, it is never too late to do the right thing. If not astronomically intimidated, but God intoxicated. He used what was at hand, the edges of the Birmingham newspaper, and with that remarkable heart and mind admonished us to stay in the struggle, never give up or postpone. We rejoice in the bottomless vitality of our people. Those of you with tired feet but rested souls, willing to go to jail for, for conscience sake, 
with a courageous, majestic sense of purpose. Here we watch at this time in history, we are appalled by the silence of good people. We who see the interrelatedness of all communities tied in a single garment of destiny. Dr. King told us all those years ago that anyone who lives inside the United States is, should never be considered an outsider. Encouraged by his words, we join our voices to shout, we will not stand for injustice to any brother or sister. He apologized for the length of his letter. Today's messages are whittled of all essence to spare those short of attention, leaving only the catchy phrase, when science is ignored and journalists are shunned by those in power. May we be moved to write letters longer than ever before, as if writing not from our comfortable desks, but as uncomfortable with this situation as if in jail, yet impelled to write what is right. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. I keep forgetting about next week. Um, how could you forget? I, f I forgot that Trump Wrong was elected and, you know, <laughs> people might be very upset next week. I think that's why we have Octavio reading next week so he can let it all out for us. Um, up next, we have another wonderful sun poet, Chris. Thank you. All right, thank you. Yeah, I am Chris Billings. I am the co-chair and the co-host of the Sun Poets uh, Weekly Open Mic, again at the Almost Pharmacy. I got a couple poems here. I took the uh, On Dreaming uh, prompt uh, that Victoria had put on the, uh, the Facebook thing. The first poem here is called A Fully Remembered Dream. I got the, uh, can everybody hear me okay? I'll come yeah. right down. Uh, from a quote from Colette Bryce, it's called, she said, some poems like dreams seem to come from another level, slightly beyond what we know or remember. Often we capture only fragments, and when a poem is written like a fully remembered dream, its meaning can, be with, can remain withheld for a long time. So I call this a fully remembered dream, but it is actually based on a dream that I did have. I was gonna kill her. I had the box all ready to put her in and I knew the dumpster I would drag it to on my way to catch the train after this, the end of the semester, but she foiled my perfect plan by not coming home that night. So while our other roommates slept, I fretted about my next move. She was there at the party on the parade field the next night, dressed up like a Russian China doll, looking as real as only Angelina Jolie could. I watched as she mingled in the crowd and I fell in love all over again. I watched as she stood in front of a woman and they laughed until a shot rang out from the long sleeve of the woman's coat and my china doll fell to the ground. I ran to her, knelt next to her, cried for her as the pool, blood pooled around her head. A crowd gathered around us beneath the awning. I took her hand and apologized for what I had planned to do for what this woman had done anyway. And she, I, the scene started to fade away. The party was in full swing. The band played music from the 50s and she danced with the other revelers of Marilyn lookalike, smiling and waving and looking at me, winking as she made her way through the crowd, away from me. And when I opened my eyes, I could only think to myself that Miss Bryce must be on to something. I still not exactly see what that poem means, but it's a fully remembered dream. Okay, this one's uh, Dreamers for John Lennon and Martin Luther King Jr. We said he was a dreamer. He said, I'm not the only one. Yesterday, 200,000 dreamers proved John right as they marched San Antonio's east side to honor Dr. King. To show that his dream is still alive, that we share the same dream, that no matter what ship we all came in on, we are indeed all in the same boat now. That we dreamers are sailing on seas of hope, riding out storms that rage, determined to reach safe harbor on the shores of peace and unity in a land where, yes, we all can live as one. We have indeed traveled far still. We dream, we march, we imagine, because we have yet far to travel. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Chris. All right, so up next we have Tom. I'm the husband of a son poet. <laughs> this was written a couple of months ago by a woman named Rose Marie Berger. She's a Catholic peace advocate, poet, and associate senior editor something of Sojourners magazine. Um, when I found it, when a friend sent it, I knew I needed to share it. <coughs> Excuse me. It's entitled Waking Up in Donald Trump's America. And she subtitles it with a hint, a riff on Martin Niemöller and the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25. First they came for the Muslims, and I said, I'm with them, even though I wasn't a Muslim. Then they came for the immigrants, and I said, I'm with them, even though I wasn't an immigrant. They came for the Black Lives Matter activists and the LGBTQ folk, and even though I was white and straight, I said, I'm with them, when they came for the hungry, and for those who hunger for change and hunger for righteousness, I said, I'm with them. I'm with the thirsty and the thirsty earth gasping for rain. I'm with the stranger, the refugee, all those who scale walls for freedom. I'm with the naked, those stripped of human dignity, those without decent work, without the cloth of human compassion. I'm with the sick, the disabled, the addicted, and all those dependent on the kindness of strangers. I'm with the prisoners, the journalists, the detained, the deported, and the deplorable. When they came for them, I said, I'm with them. I am with them. I'm with us. Thank you very much. Okay. Huh? If anyone else wants to sign up for the open mic, I have a sheet here. I'll meet up with you in a second. Uh, up next is the wonderful San Juana. Hello. Um, I consider myself a San Antonio poet now because I'm all over the place. Um, when jazz, I started out really a jazz poet and Mario Barista and Deco and now I'm at Sun Poets and hopefully I'll be here uh, every Tuesday and so wherever there's an open mic for people that are doing poetry, I'm there. Okay, this one is called um, El Milagro de las Palabras. The Miracle of Words. For so long, my love, I'm sorry, for so long, my life was mundane and uninspired. I felt I had no free will and my destiny was to be born to die. But I was already dead. I had heard that we were all had, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, shoot. Let me start again. <laughs> for so long, my life was mundane and uninspired. I felt I had no free will and my destiny was to be born to die, but I was already dead. I had heard that we all had intertwined relationships and that everything happened for a reason. Can someone tell me why? Why was my destination unknown to me? Why was every day just another day? I begged the wingless angel in all her humanity to look down on me, to have mercy on me and close the curtain to my dark and gloomy life. And like the miracle of immaculate conception, a milagro de la palabra was sent to me. And she said, no llores, don't cry. Just keep on writing. The words will come like fallen berries from a tree when the weight of their deliciousness will not let them stay. 
I will cover you with a canopy of diamonds. The words that come from the heart will be liberating to some. Some will cry, some will laugh. Some will judge you, but don't you pass judgment. You will write about lost loves and broken hearts. Sometimes, without intending, you will look into the souls of people who had closed the memories to the wounds and scars left behind. They will open their minds and hearts and begin to heal. Do not give up. You were sent the gift for a reason. You will fit in wonderfully, and in the process, you will also heal yourself. Thank you. Next one I wrote about my son. I have a son in prison in Michigan. And this is a letter about when he got arrested. It's called Letters from Prison. Letters from Prison are the connection to my heart, my son. The night he called desperate because he knew there was big trouble ahead. I couldn't breathe, the pounding in my head so loud. Oh my God, I just want him to be okay. I fell to the floor, sobbing, sobbing. I said nothing, at least not in words. My anguish closing my throat, holding back my screams. I had felt so blessed to have him home, so happy and full of joy. What happened? Where did I fail you? Snatched away from me again lost him to the side of time to write and poem all those words in his head. Dear mom, he wrote, next time I promise I'll say no. To give up all you have for one night of liquid deception of believing in the either of drink, you forget that your heart is in the hands of the family and the love was there whenever I needed it. I'm sorry mom, I let my people down. But I swear by all the air that I breathe that when I come to that river again, I will not cross it. I love you, Mom. Letters from prison, poems of regret, caution, and anticipation for the time when you will be home again. That's what keeps us going. That's what keeps us connected. Letters from prison. I love you, son. Uh, up next, we have Susanna. Thank you. Thank you. I also am a Sun poet every Wednesday, 6.30 to 8.30. Almost promising. I have two poems. This first one is called Weta Hood. I never wore my Weta Hood well. I thought I stuck out like a sore thumb at the south side store where everyone stared. What's this gabacha doing here? She's in the wrong hood, man. Sometimes boys stayed away as though my light skin might bleach out their Indian pride. Other times grown men made kissy noises when I walked home from school and called out to me, Wera, he Werita, as though I would come running, as though I would look into their eye lust as though they couldn't see my face ridden with shame. My friends laughed and my face flushed more, a pitfall of light skin, a blush glows like a traffic light. Whenever my mother spoke to me in English, I responded in Spanish to make sure that mi gente knew that I was one of them, a Mexicana pura, nothing more and nothing less. Thank you. This one is, I call the maniacs. I have maniacs for granddaughters, pretty little girls, long, thick hair, outfits that match, colors that coordinate, sweet, sweet fashion, love in their eyes, my sweetest memories, them cuddling in my lap, their soft words, big eyes looking up at me. But come the eve of New Year, these little girls don a spit in your eye fearlessness, a mad bravado, marine toughness, no leaders need apply, they've got it covered. They wield punks like lightsabers, igniting fuses left and right, red devils, black cats, 
Roman candles, crazy groundhog, mucho madness, sparknado. My little girls dash away from the danger fun like sparks, sometimes with an ear torturing shriek out of their pink rosebud mouths. Old Ireland's troubles were play acting in comparison. Modern troubles don't necessarily pale. But where did my sweet girls learn battle strategy, street warfare, explosive etiquette? A relative text to wish a happy new year. I text back praises for my sweet maniacs. Relative checks back. No fireworks are allowed in my neighborhood. Neither in mine. Suddenly a new sound accompanies the music of this new year bombardment. Rat tat 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 tat. Sounds far away, but not too far. Slow paced. Only one image comes to mind. Rat tat 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 tat. Fear disguised as disbelief rattles around in my brain. I want to herd my royal princesses indoors, but then the war zone explodes into a Hollywood movie. The clock stands at attention, and last year will never again appear. Happy New Year, hugs and kisses, firestorm, detonator, TNT bomb, bone breaker, the big bang, and in the distance, rat tat 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 tat. Soon, here comes San Antonio's finest, shining a spotlight house to house. Can't blame them, can't blame the neighbors for not all have maniacs in the family. I'm sure the reports were heartfelt. Neighbors, passers-by, eye in the sky, rat-tat-tat-tat, however, does not emanate from my maniacs. And just one look at my beloved sweet faces, now tired, yawning, sleepy-eyed, and SAPB waves a friendly goodbye. My girls laugh and wave back, and I pray that they learn the correct lesson here. This fearlessness, this spin-your-eye bravado, I can only hope that they use it to traverse the world. Happy New Year, my sweet beloved girls. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So thank you all for uh, enduring some of the outside noise. Uh, we'll see if we can do something about that next time. So we're at our final reader for the night, the wonderful Alicia Galvan. His eyes widened with disbelief as he said, What? You're not from here? Your parents were migrants? I realized at that moment that he was right and started to think more about it. A migrant's daughter, always moving to the next harvest, always searching for the first and the best fruit nature has to offer. Then it met sense. This emotion of restlessness, of not knowing what home feels like, roaming and ask where I'm from because of the way I talk 
is different. That I don't quite fit in because half of my genetics is nebulous in perpetual mystery. A migrant star. Even as I was being born, the vehicle was in motion. The cries of ten other persons crying pushed down to my mother, combined with the crescendo of cries of my mother. The sounds were mixed with a thunder. The wetness of my small, bloody body mingled with raindrops as nature gave me my first bath, washing me with water from the sky, blessing me with pure water coming from different lands, different winds. Since I don't know half of my blood, I claim the world as my father and relate it to everyone I may meet. The second one is one that I wrote. Um, I participate uh, every year in several times here in, in Canada with the writers. And there was a couple of years ago that I was able to travel. They were honoring Marjorie Algosin. And um, I wrote this for that event. And it's talked about a samovar. Does anybody know what a samovar is? It's a, it's a con beautiful contraption from AT, and it travels with the, uh, the Jewish people. And that's one of the things they always take with them. I wrote it in Spanish, but I'm going to read it in English. Reflections and a samovar. Reflections of mirrors lead from that yesterday to perhaps a tomorrow. Images of souls souls with images, leaving a stone on your tomb, a saying, I remember you, then walking towards the port. This afternoon, we enjoy tea prepared in a samovar to fill the air with the sweet fragrance of memories. Of what, what does one think when there is nothing more than to await that long journey towards the other side of the world? Reading and reading again the letters telling about the cities with strange languages, and in that instant hold on passionately to the dream of survival so that our own can keep on living each journey has a purpose, no matter how absurd. Each morning has its celebration, and each celebration has its mourners. Today I discover, upon starting a path towards another chapter of my life, that encountering the past is inevitable impossible to toss everything into the trunk of forgetting. I want to thank Victoria and Vincent uh, for allowing to open this space for the world. being here tonight. Uh, we're going to do this every Tuesday uh, here at Sabina's Coffee Shop. Uh, take a look at the post. We'll be posting the readings as well as um, any pictures that uh, happen tonight. Yeah, and I think uh, the theme for next week, uh, I, I used to host an open mic in, in near Syracuse, New York um, in a town called Oswego, right on Lake Ontario. I hosted it for years and years, and one of the things we did was we, we said a word at the end of the evening so that 
those who maybe didn't write poetry or read that night would come back with a poem based, like, um, inspired by that word and inspired by our readers. So next week, um, the word of the day is love riot. Um, and, and hopefully that'll be a political uh, thought for you, love riot. Thank you. Uh -huh.